So what's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? My name is Katie Miller. I currently live in Morristown in New Jersey, and I have a band called Kate Dressed Up. Uh, and I'm also in school right now for electrical engineering. And uh, I, I do a few other things here and there. I'm pretty busy. Wow. Electrical engineering. I wasn't expecting that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I just started like a little less than a year ago because with the pandemic and, you know, music, the whole industry being really wonky right now, it just seemed like a good time to kind of diversify, I guess. For first time listeners, how would you describe your sound or what musical influences do you draw from? I was thinking about this earlier, actually, because I mean, it's a fairly common question and I always have a hard time answering it. But I would say lately and for this record, there's some Cheryl Crow in there. There's some Bright Eyes, some Fleet Foxes, anything kind of in that indie folk world. For me, in the way that I create, I always have my acoustic guitar as kind of like the centerpiece, um, at least in the writing process. And so that kind of determines a lot of the rest of the sound palette that I use. Congratulations on the new single off of your upcoming album, Thank uh, you. Ride Home. And you also had a music video that you released. What was that whole process like? How long were you working on the song? What inspired it? Can you give us any behind the scenes tidbits? I began writing most of it, uh, I would say like 2017 into 2018, right around the time that I was going to start self-producing it, which I had done with previous works. I met my current producer, his name is Ravi Bavsar. He goes by sophomore. He uh, was working at a place called Flux Studios in New York City, basically through a very weird kind of butterfly effect chain of events. We linked up and hit it off instantly after like going back and forth with just a one-off song that we did together, uh, he actually offered to do the entire album like for me, with me. And so what we basically did was we just worked in flux anytime that it wasn't booked, which it's a super busy studio. So we ended up doing sessions like midnight to four in the morning. We worked like from noon to midnight on the 4th of July one year. We worked on New Year's Day 2020. So basically, this has been like a, a years long process now because of the way that we went about making this. And we we really took our time with it, which is something that, you know, I'm learning not all artists get to do in the studio. I'm just so blessed to have really not experienced that a ton. We really, really took our time with this stuff. So that's kind of everything that went into it on the on the song end of things. And then the video, I was just lucky enough. I, I've been familiar with Bob Sweeney's work for a while. And so when it came time for me to reach out for someone to do the video, he was just kind of an obvious choice for me. And I was lucky enough that he was down to do it. The other actress in the video, her name is Leah Scully. I've known her since my freshman year of college. So I kind of just reached out and asked if she would want to do it. And she was down. And um, my brother who produced my first two EPs was on set with us and he was kind of helping during the day too. And we just shot that out behind um, the house I grew up in. It just kind of like backs up onto like a lot of state land up in North Jersey. It kind of just fit the mood. Bob is super talented and he just brought this great vision to life that just totally brings a new dimension to the song. So I'm very excited about both the song and the video. Yeah, it's beautifully shot. I was like, is that shot on film or was it shot on, you know, digitally and then had cinematic effects added to it? But it was really beautiful. The sun, the, the time of the day that you shot it came together really beautifully. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, that day actually, um, the very next day was like the first day that it snowed that year. So like we got it right at the perfect time when it was like that dead kind of end of fall vibe going on. And then the very next day, it just looked totally different. So that was pretty cool. It looked like it was cold. <laughs> it definitely was cold. Yeah. And my friend Leah is a trooper. She was just wearing a, a dress of mine that I wore to a wedding a few years ago. She did really great that day too. What is your like process like in terms of writing songs? The music comes first and then the lyrics or do you get inspired by 
you like you see a movie playing in your head and you kind of write a story or is it personal experiences or it's like part fiction and part nonfiction is kind of what ends up happening there's not really like a set process for me necessarily a lot of times it'll just be like little like dribbles of like lines or notes like here and there and like sometimes those will grow into songs and then other times I just like hear the whole thing all at once it's done I'll be inspired by something that I like observe or experience in in my day-to-day and then that kind of like transforms itself through the writing process into something like it's me but it's also separate from me I don't know how else to really explain that and then other times a song just comes like out of nowhere and then like a year or two later I'll be like oh that's that's what that was about and it makes sense in retrospect but not at the time so you started out as a solo project and now you're a five-piece band so what inspired that what motivated that and also who are your bandmates a big part of the reason that I started as a solo project is because a, a previous band of mine who's actually with one of my current bandmates and my my best friend logistically our lives kind of like physically separated us and so our project kind of like took a back seat because of the way that life happens from the beginning like I always wanted my best friend his name is Vin to to be part of Kate Dressed Up and my other best friend Elise who sings to be a part of Kate Dressed Up like the the two of them were pretty much always non-negotiable from the start because they're my best friends we've been singing together for like pretty much a decade now and the three of us have just been very much like a unit through our late teens into adult lives. So that was like always the intention to have them involved. And Vin is like one of the best musicians and the best songwriter that I know, period. Like he's just next level. Elise is like one of the best singers I know. There have been like a lot of other iterations of K Dress Up over the past two and a half or so years. Like I, I added my cousin Christopher, who's a drummer, and my friend Elaine Rasnick, who owns Daughterboard Audio. She's a mastering engineer. They were in the band at times. Going into 2020, I had plans to take the band on like a, a real full band national tour. I planned that with uh, my business partner, Mickey. I set up the band to be uh, me and Vin, and then Ryan Hillsinger, who is a producer and he owns AGL Sounds, which is a studio in New Jersey. He's a drummer. I asked him to come on tour and he was down. So I added him. My friend Nick, who I actually met through Christopher in a previous iteration of the band, is an incredible bassist and an incredible musician. Like next level, same thing, like same level as Vin. They're like freaks. And so is Ryan and so is Elise, honestly. They're all kind of like musical freaks in my eyes, like in, in the best possible way. And Nick, you know, he wants to be a musician and, and I'm lucky enough that he likes my band and my music and he was down to come on tour. And then when the tour fell through, I just asked them if they wanted to stay in the band and keep making music, even though there's like not really any prospects right now. And they all said yes. And so we've been making more music and it's just been like this current lineup that I have is like something is making sense in like a way that it hasn't yet that I've been looking for. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited about like releasing all this new stuff and having them back me up. What are you most looking forward to in 2021? Assuming the world opens up more than it has and things return a little more to quote unquote normal. I'm getting married in May. I was supposed to get married last May and you know, everything happened. We have more songs in the pipeline. We have a 10 song full LP in the pipeline. Ravi engineered all the production at Flux and he's also mixing and mastering it. At this point, years we've been working together, our visions have like not diverged at all, like musically and, and the sound palette and what the finished product should sound like. He understands my imagination of the songs and not only understands it, but he also like supplements it and like agrees with a lot of my tastes and ideas and like supports me to like bring them all to fruition and like manifest this vision together so it's cool when Ravi and I very very first met there was definitely just like an, an understanding we musically like clicked right off the bat which was cool because Ravi mostly produces hip-hop 
And so him working on my stuff is just really, really different for him. And it was a new thing for me to be working with not my brother as a producer. And it's been just amazing. This album, the whole thing has live drums, which is fun. Like the whole thing has live drums. I had um, a drummer from New Brunswick. His name is Evan Sione and he's just extremely talented and I'm lucky that he played on these songs so that was fun for me too. So take us back to the beginning. Do you come from a musical family? Both sides of my family, moms and dads, there's musicians on both sides. In my house growing up, my dad plays the guitar. He was the musician. So that was just always around. I started with piano lessons when I was young. As I got a little older and got slightly into my teen years, you have these new feelings and you want to start expressing them and you want to, you know what I mean? So it just it was totally natural for me to just pick up the guitar. I started on drums because hitting stuff to music is really fun. And then I wanted to sing and singing to the drums is kind of hard. So there's guitars around. That's when my dad played. I picked up a guitar. That was that. I've been playing ever since. Nice. That's nice that you have a little bit of a drumming background. You don't hear that a lot. You hear you should like piano or like clarinet. I played piano before that. I did. T I took piano lessons from like seven to 13. But when I started wanting to get into like more contemporary music and stuff, the first thing that I wanted was drums. So I played that for like six months, a year, whatever. And then onto the guitar. What words of advice or encouragement would you give to other fellow creative people who are maybe trying to stay mentally healthy during this very unusual time? Do you have any words of advice for people who are maybe just trying to get through day to day, some things to look forward to? I would say take care of the basics, like try to sleep and eat well, try to walk a little bit as much as you can. You know, if you want to talk on the creative side, just like remember to just be nice to yourself and have fun with it and let it be a therapeutic thing and not something that causes you to feel like you're under some kind of pressure because you're not. I mean, that is important, like just remembering the simple things like sleeping, turning off your phone and making sure that you actually get to sleep through the night. I actually started leaving my cell phone in a different room when I go to bed and going to sleep and waking up without a cell phone I mean, it's a very small thing, but I found it to make a pretty good difference in the way that I like start and end my days. That's a good idea, putting it in a different room. I feel like I need to put it like in another zip code. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, what would you say are some of the highlights that you've experienced just musically, either performing or writing or just anything about the creative process? Oh man, I have been so lucky and just really blessed with a lot of really great experiences so like to take it back first I would say to my best friend Vin I guess I was like 22 and I was living with my mom after I graduated college and he was in his freshman year and he was going for music at the time we had our band together which was called the Fox and the Rose and for like a whole year of my life every day he would finish school and just come to my mom's house and we would just make music for like, I would say like anywhere from three to five hours. And he would teach me everything that he learned that day in school. So I basically got like the first year of a music education through him just telling me what he learned that day. And that year made me a way, way, way better musician, guitar player, singer, songwriter, the whole deal that was super like formative to my whole musical existence. So that's a big highlight. And then for Kate Dressed Up, I would say like we've played at World Cafe Live. We've headlined there. That was really, really fun. One of my favorite shows. Last December, we got to play Asbury Lanes for the What a Wonderful Year show. That stage is just so much fun to be on. It sounds so good up there. We had so much fun. And then... I've been lucky enough to do, I think to date, I've done three Girlzilla shows, which is like a feminist benefit show that I've been doing since 2016. I did one in Flemington in 2016, one in Asbury in 2018. And then last November, we did a virtual one 
where it was Philly artists and artists actually from Minneapolis. And so we had like a two city virtual thing going on. So I've been lucky to have a lot of really great experiences. Making the album with Ravi at Flux Studios is obviously that's top of the list. I'm just so lucky to have had a series of really great events, whether they've led to a person's like conventional idea of success or not. Like I am having a great time and everything is working out in a way that I'm very happy with. It just comes down to gratitude because happiness, that's like a little too lofty of a goal, I think. Like if you're like, oh, I want to be happy, like happy, that's like a transient feeling. Like you're happy for like a moment and then it, it's not like a state of constant being, but you could be grateful constantly. Like you could choose to just look around you and say, you know, I am fortunate in my own way to have these things. And I, I very much feel that. Very wise words. That was deep. I feel like I got to like <laughs> put that somewhere. Like I'm like an arch <laughs> over like a castle or something like that. That <laughs> sounds good to me. Just put my initials, just put KM in the corner or KDU for Kate dressed up, I guess. I don't know. Put your URL up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little QR code, just like chiseled into it. Oh, for sure. I've been scouring social media to kind of like check up on everything that's been going on. And, and yeah. you've, been, you've been busy. <laughs> I have been as busy as possible, yeah. March, uh, you had some like vinyls printed? Yes, the least of all stuff. We marketed it in March, took pre-orders, and then we actually recorded it uh, in Cherry Hill at AGL Studios in June. And then we sent those files off to least of all and they got printed and sent out over the summer. So that was really exciting to have some physical music of ours out in the world. They turned out beautifully. That was a cool idea. How did you think of that? Actually, the, the label, I guess you would call them least of all, their whole business model is to have bands sign up to run pre-orders on, on these singles. And then bands most often will actually go to the least of all studio and they'll print the performance directly to vinyl there in the studio. Um, but because my drummer actually owns a studio, we chose to use their studio AGL and that turned out great. And, and we just, we sent off the digital files for them to print. That's pretty cool. That was a cool idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it was a lot of fun and we ended up in one day recording for 33 vinyl prints. That's amazing. So that was pretty intense. <laughs> we played Ride Home like 20 times, you know, a bunch of other songs. I think there were only like five songs to choose from. So there were a lot of repeats. We just had a marathon of recording for like four or five hours where we just banged them all out and sent them off and we were all very tired at the end, but also very satisfied. It was uh, physically taxing, but spiritually fulfilling to be able to do that. That's a really cool concept. I think I read something about like there'd be a customized, like a greeting or something in the beginning. Yeah, so they send us the names for each order and what song they wanted. And so each performance was for a specific person. And so to start the recording, you know, Ryan would hit one, two, three, go. And then I would say like, hey Evan thanks for supporting and do a little personalized message in the beginning so everyone that got one of those has a completely unique doesn't exist anywhere else performance from us that's brilliant okay. yeah it is a pretty cool model and I'm I'm really glad that least of all asked us to be a part of it I actually had done a run with Elaine Rasnick a couple years ago we actually did go to their studio and we recorded some songs with her so I've been aware of it for a while and I knew that they like ran a tight ship so when they reached out I was very excited nice nice yeah. it sounds like it must have been very organized for all of that to run so smoothly yeah yeah they definitely have a good operation going over there and like I said I'm just very glad that a few finals exist out in the world with my music on it in April you released your music video for how could I have known and that looked like that was fun to film. You got a lot of like yeah. friends together, friends and family. What was that whole process like? Uh, I rallied the troops for that one. That video was directed by Andrea Morgan, whose work I had admired for a while because I had seen her do work with uh, an Asbury band called the Foes of Fern. They put out some great stuff. And so I reached out asking if she would be down to do a video for this song. 
and she you know got back to me saying yeah let's rock and very much as the same as with ride home i chose her because i wanted her vision applied to the music um i didn't really have too much of a solid concept so that video i would say like 98 percent of the credit andrea andrea's idea she kind of told me the kind of space we needed which luckily my living space kind of fit what she needed and kind of told me the storyboard that she had in her head and so i got everyone involved uh bandmates significant others friends uh bandmates from other bands that aren't k dressed up and everyone was really cool got everyone you know pizza and beer and andrea brought some some decorations and the second she showed up it was all business set it all up it went super smoothly she had kind of all her shots in mind and just told us what to do and the three, I guess, like supporting players, Elise Kedash, Elaine Rasnick, and Tal Demergian, which I'm probably saying that wrong. They were just super willing to be a part of the whole thing and just go with the flow and what Andrea was telling us to do. And we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I had fun with the outfit changes and it ended up being like pretty much an actual party. Because while I was shooting scenes or whatever, everyone else was just hanging out and it just cultivated a really good energy that I think comes across. Yeah, definitely. It, it looks like it was a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. It definitely was. Making art with people you care about, who care about you, who also care about your art, which is a completely separate thing from just caring about me as a person. Like there is literally no higher honor to me than than having a friend who also, for some reason, will, you know, also care about this thing that I've been doing for years now. And it's just, it's so special to me. I really can't overstate that. You can't replace that, that depth and that dedication. That's, yeah. No, no way. Yeah. Definitely. Very, very fortunate to have that. Is there anything you wanted to say about the, the song or the inspiration behind it? It's obviously super queer. It's like the first thing that I've put out that's very overtly queer. And the way it was received has just been incredible. The way that people took it. You know, I had a friend message me saying like, this is the bi anthem that I've always needed or something along those lines or, you know. And so I'm just glad that the thing that I was going for in that song, which is kind of like a whimsical, like, face palm of like looking back and like just seeing all of these opportunities kind of float by and not not experiencing regret but just it became like kind of an inside joke with myself to look back and notice those those moments in my life and then now to be in a place where I experience a lesser degree of self-consciousness in those situations. And, and now being able to share that, it's just, that's really what's special to me now. And seeing the growth from where I was writing the song to now having released it and having this part of myself be so much more prominently, like publicly displayed. And that's been cool. Love it. I love it. Face palm is a good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a good term. I mean, yeah. it's like, how could I have known? But then the whole joke is like, bro, come on. I think we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. In some, yeah. in one way or another, we've definitely had those facepalm moments where it's like, well, yeah, looking back, obviously. There's yeah, and it's like, that's not like a distinctly queer experience. Like, obviously, that happens to straight people too, I think. But um, I think all of the kind of like weird stigma and baggage that comes with queer relationships kind of like amplifies those experiences a little bit in a way. So that's where I was coming from really with, with sharing that whole story and, and idea. I like that. What was it? The, the bi anthem? What did your friend say? Yeah, yeah. Like this is, this is the bi anthem I've always needed. Something along those lines. She was basically saying like, Yes, I also am a queer woman, terrified to talk to other queer women. And I feel like that that really 
almost more than anything else, when that particular friend reached out to me, that's when I was like, okay, I'm glad that I made this. You know what I mean? To, to share that and have it actually resonate and someone else feel what I was feeling when I wrote it. That's the most important thing is that connection. And so that's what makes it all worth it. Yeah, definitely, definitely something right people can relate to and it right it gives a voice to a situation or an experience or a series of experiences that yeah you feel like you're not alone okay I had a face palm moment but okay yeah exactly. <laughs> someone else did too okay Take I feel better about good. it <laughs> <laughs> so you had uh at May wedding ceremony I did yeah mm -hmm. I married my husband Roger so that's pretty funny going from the queer song to marrying my husband it was such a trip in the best possible way. I don't know if I really fully expected ahead of time for it to be like the best day of my life, but it, to date, I would say that it was by a long shot. Our great, great friend and business partner, Mickey, um, married us. So that was really special. My best friends, my bandmates, Elise and Vin, who sing with me all the time, and you know, you see them everywhere. They sang me up and down the aisle. We had a small ceremony, but we didn't want to sacrifice any of the things that made it really special. The food and music were just top notch. Having my family around was so special. From the time that we kind of all came together to the end of the night was just so much love. And it's been cool since being married is, I would give it an A plus. It's great. So yeah, that was a huge life event that happened for me. Yeah. Congratulations. Bigger is not necessarily better. It's really those important, like really personal parts yeah. of the things that you're going to remember. Yeah. It really is just about the people who were there and being able to share and celebrate our love with them. We've been together like nine years already. And it was like our third wedding plan too, because we were supposed to be married in 2020. I could not have changed a single thing to make it better than it was really. Well, it sounds like you attract the right kind of people to you too, that it's not just by accident that- I hope so. Sending out the right vibes, that you've got I, the right energy that you attract and repel drama. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems that way, just based on the people in my life and how literally amazing they are. I mean, my brother's great friend was our videographer and it was his first time doing a wedding and he nailed, nailed it. The video is amazing. Um, my drummer, Ryan, who owns AGL, uh, came through at the last second to be like the second videographer to kind of capture a second angle. Even people who weren't right in the wedding were pulling through for us in really big ways. There was like a snafu. We were going to be at a venue and then we moved it to my mom's house. And one of my brother's other really great friends ended up driving for us. And we like rented a, like a 15 passenger van and he drove for us. So really across the board, everyone came through whether they were there or not. It was just such a special thing, almost to a point of being overwhelmed in a good way of just how much love and care we really have in our lives. I feel very happy and blessed and grateful for all the people in my life because it's really been a year of just people, for real. Did you sing your vows? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did make everyone there do a sing-along after we got married to With Arms Outstretched by Rilo Kiley. Elise and Vin sang it, crushed it, and everyone else was like singing and clapping. And that's, that's all we wanted. So that was cool. It sounds like you've got some amazing bandmates pulling through from every angle, every aspect. I mean, Vin and Elise are my best friends. We go back at this point, like going on 12 years. Vin I know from my hometown, Elise I know from college. When I introduced them, they instantly like created a super connection. So the three of us have been like, they're my family. They're amazing. Even Ryan too, like Ryan is a late addition. You know, they've been so supportive of Kate Dressed Up and of me as a person since we've started working together for a couple of years now. So 
yeah, I I love my band. And Nick, my silent bassist, is somebody that has just been down for the ride since he got in on the band. Like, I feel strong when I'm around them. Like, I feel like they lend to my existence in a way that I feel very lucky to have. So you had your five-year anniversary of Kate Dressed Up. Uh, yes, the self-titled came out September 2016. Seeing that day come and go was, it was interesting because the project is so much more and so much better than I imagined five years ago. And the flip side of that coin is there are so many things that I thought I would have done by now that I haven't gotten to yet. And so it's been this weird like meandering thing that I've been doing and I'm enjoying that journey in itself. Speaking of journeys, I love the story that's told through the fountain. That ties right into my next question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's so beautiful. I wrote down like, um, oh gosh, I love this, this lyric. It's like I had been sleeping and only then was I awake. Yeah. I love that. That's like one of my favorite lyrics of like 2021 that I've heard. Oh <laughs> I've heard thank this you. song. I mean, that's so beautiful. Like the whole the whole song's beautiful. And then yeah. the, the animations too, as well, to like yes. really beautifully done on all aspects. What was, Thank you. what was that like? How long was that in the works? Had that been kind of brewing for several years? Or? Yeah, that one. Okay, so that one is a little different because it's the oldest song in terms of writing, but it was also the final addition to the album. Vin and I had a band before Kate dressed up called The Fox and the Rose. I wrote the skeleton of the fountain. So I had like, you know, verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Like I had that kind of outlined and I had the lyrics and I, I brought them to Vin in our previous iteration. And Vin helped me with the arrangement, with the harmonies, with some of the melodies in certain spots and Vin helped me basically Vin co-wrote the song with me we wrote it together then it kind of just sat and the fox and the rose took a turn where it was not really a thing anymore in like a business way kind of went on the back burner uh, when I moved to South Jersey and Vin was still living in our hometown in North Jersey flash forward uh, all these years later and I have nine of the songs on the album done, ready to go. I have some songs that I wrote more recently and I was kind of looking through them. They all didn't feel right. And then this song kind of popped into my brain because the person who inspired the song in the first place made an appearance in my life toward the end of the album coming together. And it sparked my brain to remember that song and make that connection like oh this song is the one that's supposed to finish the album the album is little prince themed it started out as like somewhat of a concept album and it kind of diverged but it kind of still is a concept album in the little prince there's a plot point where the pilot and the little prince are looking for a well in the sahara desert and the pilot is like, this is stupid, we're gonna die. And the prince is like, no, don't worry. And then they, you know, obviously they find the well. In that way, it fit, it fit the narrative of the other songs, it fit the feeling of what I wanted. And so I asked Vin if they would mind me putting it on the album and they were down. And so this song is actually the only one on the album that we live tracked at Flux Studios. So we brought in Vin and I, uh, and then Nick, my bassist, and Evan Sioni, who is the drummer on the rest of the album. And we rehearsed, and then we went into the city all together, and Ravi set us all up so that he could just go one, two, three, go. And we played the song, and that was magical. I mean, playing music with people is just such a different feeling than just tracking something or doing it alone. And I feel like that is really captured in the arrangement. Then Vin and I went back and we recorded the vocals at Ravi's house after the fact, and we added organ and then the song was done. And for this one, I, I just had it in my head that I wanted an animated video. 
through a recommendation, I was introduced to KXB Studio, which is owned and operated by a woman named Tina who does all kinds of really amazing animation work. And I told her I wanted something that was like almost childlike in its simplicity. And I sent her, you know, of course, illustrations from The Little Prince. Working with Tina was so cool. She sent me a storyboard. I asked for one little adjustment. She sent me another storyboard. I said, cool, great, go do your thing. And then I didn't see it for like eight to 10 weeks. And when I did eventually see it, I was blown away. No edits, no changes, it's perfect. I mean, she just really understood the feeling that we were trying to capture. And I really think that the way she put the video together is just like, I think it's moving. And I think that it, it touches the same thing that the song itself does. And actually, I don't know if they'd want me to share this, but the first time that Vin saw it, they definitely cried. Actually, the day that we finished the vocals for it, we watched it all together for the first time. And Vin definitely cried in a good way. And that's how I knew. I was like, oh, okay, this is good. This is a good thing. It's like, you can't pick a favorite child, but like, I love it a little extra just because of, you know, Vin's partnership in it, because of the video that goes with it, because of this particular time in my life that is not in itself connected to the time and place where the rest of the songs were written, but did kind of still complete that picture. It was really nice. I was really, really glad that it ended up on the album. Um, I think it's turned out amazing. It's really beautiful. I, I really enjoyed listening to it. I really enjoyed watching it. It was, but yeah, that, that came together perfectly. The animation was just the right style for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, yeah. it's crazy too. Cause like with animation is because of the work involved, it's just expensive. Cause it's just a lot of, a lot more hours go into animating than into like live action stuff. Just honestly, Tina and I kind of worked out something that would work for the budget that I had. Her other animations are nothing like what she made for The Fountain. Like they're beautiful and they're really cool and, and interesting, but they're just really different than what she did for me. When she sent the video back, I was like, wait a second, like th that's what this got me? Like this, this budget that you said was like, like simple you did this with it like it just it completely blew my mind it blew me out of the water it exceeded every expectation that I had which was already pretty high because Tina does like I'd seen her other work and she just still like blew us all away just amazing it's one thing to work with people you've known for 10 years you know what I mean? But to like hire somebody on a recommendation and to have them really get the vision and, and not only that, but like amplify it and add their own touch in a way that it just fit. And I, I was just so, so stoked on it. I'm so glad that you like it and that it like hit for you also. Yeah, that, yeah she got it. <laughs> she, I know. Yeah. I know. Again, same thing with the other videos. I cannot take any credit there. That is all KXB Studio, just absolutely nailing it. Yeah, I, I love working with other creatives. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it shows the power of your, your music as well and your artistry that you're able to paint a picture or do something that moves somebody or that paints a really strong um, yeah, imagery in their head that then they can take what it was and then translate it into another medium like yeah. you know, live action video or animation. So, so that's really a testament to, to your, you know, talent as an artist that you're able oh, to, you. to create that whole world and someone else can be like, okay, I, I totally get it. And thank you. Or get some, you know, some perspective of it. And, I mean, that's always the hope, you know, so far the feedback that I've been receiving has, has been indicative that I am on the right track. So I'm rolling with it for sure. I'm waiting to see like the fountain in the trailer for a film, <laughs> like an indie film or something. Or <laughs> oh, man. From your lips to God's ears, speak that. Yeah, absolutely. I would love that. I saw that you launched also an online store. 
Oh yeah, I'm so excited about that. Earlier this year, right before I released Ride Home, I kind of um, did like a, a rebrand, which was really the first time that I was branding K Dressed Up at all because I'm not a brand designer. The store and everything in it is designed by Purva Sawant, who is a graphic designer based in New York City. When we started working together, she was designing visuals for the UN, like the United Nations. And I think she's since gone into like private firm stuff for businesses. I met her through Ravi and she does not work with any other artists or musicians. Like that's not what she does. She works with businesses. So again, I feel so lucky to have her talents in my corner because girl is a freak at what she does. Like same with everyone that I've managed to work with. I don't understand how this happens, but she's incredible. Like when we started working together, she sent me like questionnaires and like quizzes to kind of like get a feel for my stuff. And every step of the way I would be like, okay, well I imagine this. And then like a week later she would be like, I imagine this thing that you didn't mention at all that's completely different that you never would have thought of. And like every single time she did that, I was just like, your idea is better. Let's go with that. So we slowly, very slowly over time, basically like when she had the time to work on the brand and like through the pandemic, we very slowly kind of brought this palette together with the logo and the fonts and the color palette and everything. And I mean, she has, she's really leveled up the aesthetic on K Dressed Up. And so along with the branding, she designed everything in the merch store. I'm stoked, like the shirts are super soft. The bandanas are really cool. I've been getting a good response from it. You know, people have been ordering stuff and that's been really special. And it's also kind of a relief for me as an artist to have a revenue stream at all right now. So I am glad that that's up and that has, you know, brought some income in a world where I haven't really taken any shows this year and I don't have any lined up because every time I try to plan a show, I have to cancel it. And so I'm very much in a place where I'm still exploring ways to be an artist in this circumstance. All this to say, yeah, go buy stuff from my online store, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to grab me one of those uh, green t-shirts. Like, oh my God. No yeah. lie, I love that. I was like, I'm going to wear that on my <laughs> next interview. And just like... my, my printer, um, the company is called Top Banana. They're based in Philadelphia. It's one of Roger's oldest friends. So again, just so blessed, so lucky to have this spider web of love and support. Antonio, when I sent him like, hey, what do I do? He was like, okay, well, like, this is the softest and best fitting t-shirt. You can stop looking. I was like, perfect, let's do that. And so that's been great. And they are super soft and he does such a high quality job with them. They're all printed digitally. It's not screen printed. So yeah, that's been really cool to see my stuff out in the world. And I do have designs. Designs is probably not the right word in this context. I have plans to get more designs for the store. So I hope to keep that interesting and, and have that be a way for people to support us directly in a world where music has literally been devalued to zero. I mean, we could do a whole podcast interview just talking about that. <laughs> Is there anything that you wanted to like let people know or things you have coming down the pike? Anything that you want to kind of tease? So the album is still like in its final stages because I mean, it was supposed to get done and then Ravi got COVID and, and life, 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 as with all things. I am very excited to prioritize art going forward. So my album will be out when it's ready. I have a cool thing with the band that I have planned to go along with it. We're not playing any shows for the foreseeable future because I don't feel like it's the responsible thing to do. And with that being the case, any support, any attention, any purchase on my online store, 
any purchase of music off the Bandcamp page. Anytime you tell a friend that Kate Dressed Up exists or you play them our music, that goes such a long way and helps us keep making this art. And that is the message that I wanna send to people is that I wanna be an artist that's not just trying to win a popularity contest. I wanna be an artist that is making something that I believe in, that I feel is truly worth sharing on a human level. And so that's what I'm turning toward going forward. And we'll see where that leads. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. One thing I will say is I've been working on this thing for like literally three to four years now. And I still love these songs. I'm not sick of them. I don't feel like, oh, it's too late to put them out now. Like, no, they're good. I'm psyched. It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. If, if any of your past work is, is evidence, you know, oh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you again.